I'd like to just go back to John chapter 15. If you ask me what passage in the Bible really goes at my heart, there are two. The first one is the, is the Great Commission, where Jesus Christ sets his disciples off and he tells them. And he says the following to them. He says to them, go. Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Our congregation, and I'm working on a, a document, which hopefully we can get finalized by next year, is the congregation is uniquely structured in a way that facilitates the primary goal of the gospel of Christ. And so often we find that the congregation, and I'm nobody else's critic, but I want to say sometimes we often ask the question, what does God require of me? God requires that his will be front and center. Jesus never minced words. He says, I have come into this world to seek and to save those who are lost. He also does not play games and say, well, what are you here to do? And then he says, you will have to appropriate my will for your life. And he'll say, I want you to put your burden on me. And he says, I want you to follow me because I'm going to walk with you. Almal wat vermoeid en belas is. He calls all of us and he says, I want you to lock arms with me and I will give you rest. I will give you peace. And so within the family of God, we work with that primary goal. We have uniquely fashioned ministries that is intently designed after God's will and all the spiritual gifts. This is not a slap uh, a, a, a thingy in the air. It is specifically designed because we understand that there are two things about God strengthening his church. And then obviously making it uniquely capable to draw others in, to obey, and to become his children. God's word and kingdom is including, it is also exclusive. Because when he speaks to us of becoming his children, he speaks to us loudly about the things that we will have to let go. And that is why Colossians is so important. When Colossians speaks about the idea of putting off the old and enduring, or rather dressing yourself up with the new. It's an amazing picture where the old self with the rotten behavior, the absolute destructive positions and attitudes that we have come to the kingdom with, now suddenly through the cross is purified by the blood of Christ and all the hurts and sins we owe no allegiance to and we can walk a life of purity in the sight of an awesome God. He then gives us two things. The one is he gives us the remission of sin. I was your schoon. And the second thing he does is he changes the concept of the temple where you, after being defiled through sin, he purifies and he makes home in your house, in your body, and in your soul. And the idea of being part of God's kingdom, come inside, um, Mary, is the idea that God wants us to understand that he makes house, tidies it up, and then he lives and he changes not only your body into what we often would think is just another body, but he say he calls it the inner sanctum of God, dinaos van God. And so with that in mind, he then talks in John chapter 15, and he speaks about an agricultural metaphor of the true vine, not the common vine. He speaks of the vine that is so true to everything that we know. That God wants us to understand that Jesus Christ is completely and utterly different. I think it was a Dutch theologian that made the comment and he said, God is kans andra. And the idea is that God is wholly other. In the idea that what God wants to implant into you is what the world 
cannot replicate. And that's why Paul would say in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he says, is that through the wisdom of this world, they would never have conceived who Jesus Christ is. They can't comprehend anything, even their sinfulness. Through human wisdom, it can't be quantified. It cannot be defined. And that's why in this, in this discussion that Jesus Christ has, he says, I want you to remain in me and I'll remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. You see, that interrelationship of godliness with a fallible man. And that is why when you speak to a Jew, a Jew will tell you when you talk about the number six, he would say that it is imperfect, imperfect, imperfect. But when you talk about the number seven is the word of perfection, four being for humankind, three being for the godly number. And so both of these together makes the number of perfection. And that is why for us, doing church is more than just being here. It's where we become committed to God in every sense of the word. And we get together and we encourage one another. Here's the reality that Jesus says in verse 6. If anyone does not remain in me, he's like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire. In other words, when some folk extricates themselves from the fellowship of God and tries to make the impression that it's, here's the key. You must remain in the vine. Have your connectivity with God and keep your connectivity with him. Because here it is. It's about that life-giving energy and power from God that flows through us. Seven, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you can ask whatever you wish and it'll be given to you. And verse eight, it's to my father's glory. And here's the key that you bear much fruit. Showing yourselves to be my disciples. I ripped up four trees out of my garden. Four. It was the toughest thing for me to do. And then I understood what Jesus Christ was talking about. I had nurtured those plants from the get-go. But every time they are filled with disease, every, no matter how much I spray them, they just absolutely do not bear the fruit that they were supposed to bear. I had to pull them out, and throw them away. And I know it must have been difficult for God that he also would have said to you and I, and then he speaks about the idea that there's a pruning coming. He cuts off every branch that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. And here I want to speak about sometimes when God prunes a congregation. When he prunes people out of his body, God makes it even more fruitful. And the reason for that is that God is after fruit. And sometimes he takes dead weight out and he removes it. And then he makes sure that his tree bears fruit. This year has been a tough year. But it's been an amazing year. We see Mariki and Coral and that's, that's singing at a retirement home. Where many of the folk are there struggling with mental illness. Many of them are old. Some of them have got dementia. But when the songs are being sung, they remember them. And they sing along and it's appreciated. Charlotte Robertson started that ministry many years ago. And it's a ministry that still, still continues to this day. We have Kids for Christ. An incredible ministry that is facilitated by Tish and Charles Gaynor and Johan. And this ministry is there to allow children that are coming or in Sunday school to come on a Friday evening. Where they are worked with. They learn crafts. They learn to interact socially. They learn to appreciate the godly presence of a family with the support of godly parents. Kids for Christ is an amazing family. 
that when you look at how the children interact, they don't really just interact on a one-on-one basis, but they interact with one another constantly. If we look at a young man over there, Ryan's boy over there and his daughter Anna, it's just amazing to see the happiness on those faces despite COVID. We look at Mia and we also see the young man, uh, 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 Skuman, over there as well. You know me and names. <laughs> and then we look at Kids for Christ, attentively attending to and shaping the hearts of our children. These are our children. They belong to God. They belong to Him. And in the sacred trust of stewardship, they are shepherded along that narratives of God's word. So that they can look into their history when they are thinking about waar kom ek vandaan. They can trace their history right through back to Israel. Why? Because there was a systematic approach in their education. How they interact, how they play and how God is part of their incredible shaping in their hearts. We have the youth. And here Johan and Gaynor works together. We see the gorgeous chef, Glenn, with his wonderful, what do they call Not a chef's hat. It's called a what? A hairnet. Now, I'm not trying to be funny, <laughs> but I'm trying to figure out what for, Glenn. Stop stuff getting onto my head. Stop stuff getting onto his head. Because it just puzzled me when I saw that photograph. But as you can see, God made so many heads, and he didn't cover the, the perfect ones with hair. And so we work with the children over there, and there's a wonderful fun spending together, creating inside of the children competencies. If you know anything about childhood personality development theory, and many of our young people do, you will know that these exercises are important. It's important to develop those competencies and friendship and relationships. We don't just want churchgoers. We want disciples of Christ that loves God extensively and also loves each other, cares for one another, is committed to one another, enjoy each other's company. There we see. Hey, is that you, my sweetie? Hey, there we go. There's MZ and there's Kaylee and there's Emma. Amy, the whole works. Everybody's involved and everybody's getting down to serving one another, making things and sharing it. And there's Emma. And we watch also the most amazing part there. Who's the lady at the back there? I'm not quite sure. But anyway, you get the drift. It's about spending time together and having fun. You see, brethren, when we look at our young children, we also want to be part of their journey as they go into matric, sunshine boxes for them with a couple of eats, having them know that we are on their side and we're thinking of them. We want them to do well. We want them to excel in two areas. The one is excelling in their relationship with God, growing in knowledge of God and getting involved. And then also we want them to know that education is very important and we want them to excel at that too and that they are in our prayers and in our thoughts, young adults is an amazing ministry. Amazing ministry where young adults get together. And the facilitators of that is Devereaux, Jeff, and Steph, Scott, and Elise, and uh, Glenn, and Anna Marie, where young people and unmarrieds out of the youth can meet with their peers. And the beautiful part of that is that they can talk about young people challenges and the stresses that they have to deal with. And the idea that amidst all of this, they can then talk with one another, sift their experiences through the word of God, and make righteous decisions, and get the short and the narrow road to be with God, not only in their life, but in the life beyond. Ruan and Victoria did an amazing job to work with the young folk and to enable them to be able to continue with this incredible work. We had a wonderful youth function that, that, that took off a little while ago. I think it was a gentleman by the name of Mike Smith that was here. And he did an incredible lesson. Humbling to listen to him. He's battling with some muscular disease. 
But his heart for God has not faltered. And he really blew wind in our sails. We look at these wonderful faces as they live to glorify God. Young people that are excited to be part of the God's kingdom. I see Harry in his gorgeous garb and also his wonderful hairstyle. It is something to be admired. And want to be, I'm not quite sure if I'm there yet, Harry, to have my hair dyed. But I must admit, I'll give you the, for a 10 out of 10 for courage. But again, you see young folk getting their heads ready and saying, we want to be part of something bigger, bigger than us. Morning Star is another ministry that Susie started. It's a ministry that is so amazing, and I was so blessed to be part of that. Where we can see... <clears throat> That um, she works with Jenny, that works in the library. Cecile Kirby helps with making sandwiches. Mariki helps with the singing. And in fact, they did the song called Hip, 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 Hippopotamus. I can tell you something. I was that close to also start doing that. But then I thought, no, control yourself. This is their moment. But it's just so wonderful to be part of this. Watching those faces... They got some wonderful eats this weekend. Let me just say the following. The ministry is much bigger. The functions are much bigger. The people that are behind the scenes are much greater. Gaynor, Johan, Leonard, and Tracy, many give to, toward making the sandwiches. And so when you see these precious moments, know this, that it's a greater engine room that makes this a success. It is an illusion that it's just one person. Year in function for the children, Sue normally has about roughly 30 children each week. They have a Bible story, they have a prayer, they have a craft, and then they do some singing with the children. These children, let me say this to you, they are unbelievably unhinged at times. Or so Jenny says. But I mean, <laughs> we were sitting there with all the children and I promise you, it was amazing. We sat and spoke about God. We spoke about how good God is. And a few of the children that has really been very boisterous has calmed down now. And they are now connecting with adults. They are seeing that the ethos and the behavior that's required from them is not where they come from. And that transition and adaptation is, is available to them. That they are loved. And here are children over there. We speak about their dreams. We speak about their aspirations. We also speak about their pains. And here is where inside of this environment is a unique environment where the hearts of our children in the community are shaped. That is what Christ called us to. He did not call us to open up a lounge where saints can relax and have a chill pull. He called us into as servants, servants of the cross to reach the world and to talk to them about Jesus. These kids may never have someone who cares enough to speak to them. And so the reach of these wonderful women makes it possible. This congregation carried to pay each of the teachers and help them through the last six months because there was no money. But God has been faithful that whatever this ministry needed was given. Here's the key. The question is always on the table. Why not become part of something greater and bigger than you and me? That long after we've clocked out of this world, God's work will still continue in the hearts of children. To this day, out of the morning, out of the Vasanta Kral work, daily I walk into children that were in the reading program in the matrix, that are now at university, that have got their honors degree, and are now teaching. Can you make a difference? You better believe you can. We don't just throw money at things. We throw ourselves in there so that ultimately people can connect with you. Jesus could have done this thing very differently. But he did not. He sent his son God sent his son. He sent the best that he had to, to change the world of those who are despised. We watch how every single person, part of this ministry, locks arms. Where Christ is at the center of our ministries. Ladies class is an amazing, amazing group of folk. 
where it has been facilitated for many, many years by, by, um, by Dawn. And now Allison does all the administration and Susan does all the electronics behind the thing. You've got a watcher on that desk. When I walk in and want to say hello, she asks me politely to leave. So there's no stress. She handles it pretty well, but she handles the decks at the back. Ladies' classes, all ladies are teaching. And it's a combined effort to make our women grow so that they can be better moms, better wives, better Christians, so they can connect with each other and also connect with others. You see the faces of these beautiful people, young and old, being together and celebrating the fact that they are children of an awesome God. This year has been an amazing year. A year that we will not forget very quickly. This year we found that Zilka was baptized into Christ. We watch as well as um, Phoebe was baptized into Christ. And I, you won't believe it, I've got the wrong one. Because we had Ursula on this list as well. We also had a lady by the name of Carol Ellison who was also baptized. Shame and she was completely lame. Regan was also baptized into Christ. And then also we know the fact that Leanne was baptized into Christ. And so too her husband was baptized. What's your name again? Darren. No, Darren. No. Rowan. Rowan. That's right. And then also we know Vanna was baptized into Christ. Gherki was baptized into Christ as well this year. And so too Letitia. Letitia lives in Cryfontein, and when I told to the gospel, baptized her, connected her to now worship with Milan. Milan has Bible studies at her home every t Thursday, Tuesday night, and there are folk coming to his home. It's not about trying to be territorial. It's about being kingdom-minded, where God's kingdom comes first. We're not building empires. We're building a kingdom where Christ is king. This year, too, was baptized two beautiful people. Um, what's his name again? Um, Tariq was, and Diane was baptized into Christ. I spoke to them the other day when they were on their way to work. And they sent their love to the church. And thanked you for what you have done in their lives. Gary is here this morning. Was baptized into Christ. And his great friend was such a kind guy who loves him. Zane, for so many years, impacted his life. And today, he's serving God. Charlotte, by Tico. Um, Tolo, was baptized into Christ. She was part of, she is part of the Fasanta Kral work. Wonderful, humble woman that cares about God. And here's our benevolence program. Um, let me just quickly see. There was a few more folk that I wanted on here as well. Um, yeah, Yanni, I've got on the PowerPoint, but I don't have, I didn't bring that PowerPoint. Yanni as well, as, as Jane, Jane, Janie was baptized into Christ as well. Benevolence here is one of the most incredible ministries that is facilitated by Allison, Unette, and Christia. And here again, we are dealing with month, the monthly component. We're dealing with Christmas hampers. Frozen meals for the ill and the shut-ins that are dealt with by Elise and Dawn. And if you look carefully at these slides coming out, Scripture should bounce off the walls, telling you that it is in line with the will of God. Here we find for Santa Claus prize giving. What an amazing day it was. If I can just say, we, can, we had a, um, a situation where we needed to tidy up the room, built those shelves, so that it literally can be everything be ready. So it can be grasped and prepared and packed and ready for collection. For Santa Claus prize giving again was a collective effort. A collective effort where you have Tish and Lucy May, Ursula Kibido, Johan and Gaynor, Ali and Celia. Then we're looking also at all these wonderful folk working as a team. We can even see our buns and butter team right there. We see Tola over there. We see the children as they are elevated and encouraged to reach their full potential. And here's the engine room. Buns and butter team. 
Nicholas in all his glory, with his apron on, ready for action, ready to do battle. We also see the beautiful child of Joran, Alex, involved there as well. Getting involved, shoulder to the wheel, Coral as well, as Rick. An incredible man. You see, brethren, these things do not happen in isolation. They work in concert. They work together. I had new life behavior on a slide, and I don't think it, it, it somehow didn't come through. Where new life behavior is another program that started this year. An incredible program where we had it on Zoom, training people next year. We will have another session where we are going to work with the folk in Morningstar. You see, brethren, the idea is we want God's word to get everywhere. Everywhere. We want to hand over the program to people that are properly trained so they are able to facilitate these programs. Why? Because God is at the center of it. We've got other ministries, Sunday school ministries, which Tish and Charles facilitates. Prison ministry, Oscar and Desiree works tirelessly behind the scenes with Glenn and I think Stephen Labrant as well. Then we've got Senior Saints, which Oscar and Dawn facilitates. Sorry we couldn't get a picture of Oscar in his orange jumpsuit. We really tried and appealed to his heart, but it didn't work. He was not interested. In fact, they didn't have his size. So... But as I said, you know, Brendan, we have a lot of fun with this. And I want to say to you, Brendan, at the end of the day, we're a team. People that just love God. People that just want to make Jesus the center of our lives. You know, Brendan, we realize that each one of us have got an expiry date on us. And you know, Brendan, at the end of the day, all that is physical will depart. And only that which is spiritual will main, remain. And here's what we do. We work for that which is eternal. And so this morning, I would like to just thank you so much for allowing me to be part of this congregation, that we can work together as a team and glorify God. Because ultimately, brethren, had it not been for God, you and I, we would not have known each other. We would have been on opposite ends of the spectrum. We would have been doing other things. We've been dragged into little social, political issues and all kinds of stuff. And God has made us from that good. Let us look at the ultimate gave that He has given us. And this is for people to bring us together. Under one hand. And this is the Christ of our Lord Jesus Christ. Om for allemaal, al is you ook wie, for your verlossing and forgiveness aan te bied. Then ook for you to say, you can a life. Absoluut vol leven in mij en in mijn lichaam. Waar niemand voor jou zal afstrijden. Nie. Niemand met jou gaan lelijk wees nie. Allemaal voor jou gaan respecteren. Allemaal samen met jou gaan werken. Reason being, because there's an ultimate goal. That when we stand before the throne of our Lord Jesus Christ, He can look at us and say, Well done, faithful servant. Afrikaans, weinig was je getrouw. Oor vele sal ek jou aanstel. Brethren, that's my comment for this morning, and I pray that you've enjoyed being together this morning. Let's continue being fruitful with every fiber of our being, and may we live to glorify Him today and in the weeks ahead. We're going to have some lovely tea. Let's stand together and, and have a song together. I'm going to just ask um, Mary, quite contrary. Are you here, Mary? There she is. She can come forward. Maybe just grab yourself a cup of tea and come across because we'd like to be baptized Mary into Christ. Let's sing our final closing song.